Thank you for taking the time of your busy schedules to attend today's earnings briefing. To all of you gathered here, shareholders, institutional investors, analysts, financial institutions, stakeholders, I would like to thank you all for your continued support and loyalty. I shall be providing a brief outline of the company's earnings results for the second quarter followed by a progress analysis vis-à-vis -vis our projected results for the full fiscal year ending in March 2019. I shall then yield the floor to President Fujisawa, who will provide an overview of current activities. This shall be followed by a Q&A session lasting until 11.30. Without further ado, I would like to introduce today's panel. President and CEO Nobuyoshi Fujisawa, Director and General Manager of the General Accounting Department, Mr. Taiji Hitachi. Director and General Manager of the Public Relations and Investor Relations Division, Corporate Planning Department, Mr. Takehito Yamanaka. Today's conference will be made available in webcast format, for which we will request your understanding and cooperation. Please first read the disclaimer on page 2 carefully. I would now like to begin today's presentation. Please turn to page 4. I would like to start with a brief earnings outline. The company's financial business in South Korea delivered a strong performance during the second quarter on a consolidated basis, allowing us to grow the metric of operating revenue YOI. In terms of operating profit, however, a provision on allowances for doubtful accounts associated with JTrust Bank Indonesia negatively impacted the metric of operating profit on a consolidated basis, leading to an annualized contraction of 25 million yen. However, foreign currency gains booked by JTrust Asia allowed us to book 1.1 billion yen in profit before tax, again on a consolidated basis. Please turn to the next page. As you can see from the data, the company registered, on a consolidated basis, a combination of higher revenue but lower profits for the major P&L items. Also, we suffered a loss of 2.8 billion yen derived from the decision to sell Highlights Entertainment, which resulted in a 2.1 billion yen loss for the metric of net profit attributable to owners of parent. However, Highlights Entertainment makes and sells game machines so we believe that by selling the company, we can now focus our time and resources on the financial business. Please turn to the next slide, which provides a YOI comparison for the metric of operating revenue by business segment. In terms of operating revenue, the financial business in South Korea and Mongolia was the main driver for growth during the second quarter, and posted a 2.8 billion yen increase YOI during this period. In this next slide, I would like to explore the metric of operating profit for each segment and provide a YOI comparison. We registered a YOI contraction associated with the financial business in Southeast Asia and with the investment business. Other segments remain mostly flat YOI. I would now like to provide you with a more detailed view of the results for each segment. Please turn to page 10. The financial business in Japan generated 4.8 billion yen in operating revenue, which translated into 2.1 billion yen in operating profit, with stable performance. I would like to delve a little bit deeper into these results. Please turn to page 11. We expanded our credit guarantee balance, which stood at 173.3 billion yen at the end of the second quarter mostly on account of the increased guarantee of condominium loans. As I am sure you are aware, the market for condominium loan originations is on a generalized downtrend. We expect this trend to continue into the future. We at JTrust have so far avoided the risks associated with the guarantee of condominium loans by implementing a conservative and thorough credit check policy. As a result of our efforts, and as of the end of the second quarter, we guaranteed approximately 1,700 properties and boasted occupancy rates in excess of 98% with zero defaults. 
Similarly, we continue to diversify into other types of guarantee products in an effort to reduce our dependence on the guarantee of condominium loans. The accumulation of condominium loans already approved for origination by the end of the second quarter is already enough to meet our forecast for the credit guarantee business. Moving forward, we want to add other types of guarantee products to our portfolio, in addition to our current portfolio consisting of the guarantee of overseas real estate secured loans and reverse mortgage guarantee solutions. We are currently working towards the development of new products, as well as towards building new business partnerships. These types of products will allow us to reframe the foundation of the credit guarantee business away from the guarantee of condominium loans, driving growth for the segment. Please turn to page 12. The servicer business continues to show a stable performance, allowing us to continue the purchase of billable receivables. We continue collecting on these products, while at the same time expanding our billable receivables balance. Additionally, the revenue from the write-off loan portfolio we inherited from Takefuji was stable. Please turn to page 13, which contains a progress report vis-à-vis -vis the company's full-year forecast for the financial business in Japan. As of the end of the second quarter, we had delivered 4.8 billion yen in operating revenue, or 48% of our target of 9.9 .9 billion yen. In terms of operating profit, we booked 2.1 billion yen, or 47% of our goal of 4.5 billion yen. The credit guarantee business generates a recurring stream of revenue. Our collection efforts on the write-off portfolio we inherited from Takefuji also continue at a stable pace, and so do our operations pertaining to the servicer business. We are therefore pleased with our progress for the segment and believe we are on the right track to meet our full-year forecast. Next, I would like to give you an earnings overview of the company's financial business in South Korea and Mongolia. We had previously only included Capital Continent Investment, which provides auto loan financing solutions in Mongolia, in JTrust's balance sheet statement for the first quarter. However, starting with the second quarter, the company now features in our consolidated profit loss statement. Please turn to page 15. Operating revenues stood at 20.2 billion yen in the second quarter, up from 17.4 billion yen and grew 16%. Operating profits stood at 2.4 billion yen, allowing us to meet the company's full year forecast in just six months. I would like to delve a little bit deeper into these results. Please turn to the graph on page 16, which contains a visual representation of the combined loan asset balance for the two savings banks operated by JTrust in South Korea and JT Capital, plotted against loan delinquency rates. As I have mentioned on previous occasions, we continue to grow our loan asset balance despite a tightening of regulatory standards by the South Korean government and keep delinquencies low. Please turn to the next slide. We are in the process of shifting our portfolio composition towards corporate lending solutions, which are relatively less impacted by regulatory tightening. Net interest income stood steady despite a decline in average lending interest rates due to a reduction in the interest rate ceiling. This was made possible by the continued expansion of the company's loan balance. Next, I would like to go over our results for TA assets in the servicer business. We continued adding to our receivables balance. Moving forward, we intend to continue expanding the purchase of receivables while at the same time remaining discerning in our selection of which assets to buy. TA Asset also entered an agreement to purchase non-performing loans from financial institutions in South Korea last month. Please turn to page 19, which contains our progress report for the financial business in South Korea and Mongolia vis-à-vis -vis the company's full-year forecast for the segment. As of the end of the second quarter, we had delivered 20.2 billion yen in operating revenue, or 53% of our target of 37.9 billion yen. In terms of operating profit, we booked 2.4 billion yen, allowing us to meet our full-year forecast target in just six months. 
we had anticipated the metric of operating profit to be adversely affected by tighter regulatory oversight and by the introduction of the IFRS 9 accounting standard. However, at the current rate, we anticipate being able to exceed our forecast of 2.4 billion yen. Next, I would like to give you an earnings overview of the company's financial business in Southeast Asia. Please turn to page 21. This segment posted an operating loss of 2.4 billion yen on 6.2 billion yen in operating revenue. It has been four years since our acquisition of JTrust Bank Indonesia in November of 2014. We have carried out extensive structural reforms at the bank over the past four years. This involved changes in management and personnel, changes to bank branch and system infrastructure, as well as changes in portfolio composition. However, our results for this segment during the current fiscal year were negatively affected by a number of loans to non-performing from the new portfolio. The orange line on the graph on page 22 represents the percentage composition of non-performing loans in the bank's portfolio, calculated according to Indonesian accounting standards. The graph on page 23, on the other hand, refers to the ratio of gross non-performing loans in JTrust Bank Indonesia's portfolio, both for IFRS and Indonesia standards. As you can see from the graph, a number of loans started turning non-performing towards the end of last year, and the situation has continued to worsen since then. We are aware of the root cause of these issues and are therefore working towards the swift implementation of further structural reforms at JTrust Bank Indonesia. Please turn to page 24. We've set up a dedicated task force and appointed outside experts to minimize delinquencies and collect NPLs. We are also going through a reappraisal process for our entire loan portfolio, which involves visiting debtors and an analysis of our portfolio, whereby we refer specific cases to our dedicated task force when necessary. In terms of our loan asset balance, we want to continue growing this balance through JTrust Olimpindo, a multi-finance services company in Indonesia, in which we finished acquiring a stake in October. We intend to make our new online banking services available to retail depositors as soon as possible as this will allow us to attract consumer deposits, drive down funding costs, and improve spread. Finally, we intend to implement further structural reforms at our bank branches and in terms of personnel, with an emphasis on employee training, as well as review costs associated with advertising. Please turn to page 25, which contains our progress report for the financial business in Southeast Asia, vis-a-vis -vis the company's full-year forecast for the segment. As of the end of the second quarter, we had delivered 6.2 billion yen in operating revenue, or 32% of our target of 19.2 billion yen. We are currently 5 billion yen away from our goal for the current fiscal year for the metric of operating profit. So we appreciate the need to implement swift structural reforms in time to allow us to make up for this differential. Next, I would like to give you an earnings overview of the company's investment business. Please turn to page 27. As of the end of the second quarter, we had delivered 500 million yen in operating revenue, or 42% of our target of 1.2 billion yen. We are currently 700 million yen away from our stated goal for the metric of operating profit. Last fiscal year was characterized by high volatility associated with fluctuations in the stock price of one of our investments in the segment. However, and since that factor is no longer in play, things have stabilized over the past six months. Lastly, I would like to provide you with an overview of the non-financial business. Please turn to page 29. As previously disclosed, we sold our stake in the Ador's chain of amusement arcade venues towards the end of last year. More recently, we also decided to sell our stake in Highlights Entertainment, which develops and sells game machines, as part of our strategy of shifting and concentrating our resources towards other segments. Highlights Entertainment have been consistently losing money, so we are confident our decision to sell our stake in the company will have a positive effect on JTrust Group's value. 
please turn to the next page, which contains our progress report for the non-financial business vis-a-vis -vis the company's full year forecast for the segment. In terms of operating revenue, we have so far achieved 23% of our target for the current fiscal year and are currently 400 million yen away from our stated goal for the metric of operating profit. Lastly, I would like to direct your attention to page 33, which contains our consolidated progress report for the company as a whole. As of the end of the second quarter, we had delivered 36.5 billion yen in operating revenue, or 44% of our target of 83.3 billion yen. We are currently 7 billion yen away from our stated goal for the metric of operating profit. As I have outlined in this presentation, the financial business in Japan, as well as in South Korea, continued to drive growth during the second quarter. The only segment we consider problematic is the financial business in Southeast Asia. We are currently working at full capacity to address the various structural issues at JTrust Bank Indonesia. This concludes my presentation. I would now like to yield the floor to President Fujisawa, who will be providing an overview of current initiatives for the company. Thank you for listening. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nobuyoshi Fujisawa, President and CEO of JTrust. We recently announced the company's earnings results for the second quarter of the fiscal year ending in March 2019. As you all heard in Mr. Hombu's presentation, the financial business in Japan and South Korea were drivers of growth during the second quarter. We experienced a few setbacks in the Indonesian business, which continues to negatively affect earnings for the company. We also sold our stake in Highlights Entertainment, resulting in a loss of 2.8 billion yen. This was a one-time non-recurring loss, however. Litigation fees also continue to affect earnings performance during the second quarter. Results have therefore been mixed and heavily polarized, with some business segments delivering results while others underperformed. However, I am confident we will be able to improve results for the company as a whole by coming up with adequate strategies for each segment. I will start by discussing the business of Keyholder. Keyholder recently reported a loss of around 100 to 200 million yen for the first half of the year. We are not worried about these numbers, as the company's contribution for all of JTrust is low, and because we feel we can easily turn a profit by selling a very small portion of its real estate holdings, which have greatly appreciated in value since acquisition. Mr. Yasushi Akimoto is expected to acquire a 15% stake in the company in the form of issuable shares. We also announced the transfer of operations pertaining to the management of the SKE48 Idol Group and exercise of warrants from AKS to Keyholder. This was a very impactful announcement for both AKS and for many participants in the Idol Group business. In fact, it created quite a bit of commotion on Twitter. Due to the impactful nature of this matter, we took a rather cautious approach to this announcement. From AKS's point of view, Mr. Akimoto was an outside producer. However, through Keyholder's management of operations at the SKE project, Mr. Akimoto is therefore slated to become a Keyholder shareholder. That is, Mr. Akimoto is expected to grow from being an outside producer to the producer who is a shareholder. AKS has expressed a desire to help us to prevent any conflicts of interest. SKE48 is one of the most profitable ventures within AKS, which is why we chose them. The 48 group has expanded operations into Thailand and into the Philippines. However, a partnership with a company with the necessary financial resources is of the utmost importance in assuring the success of a venture of this kind. Given JTrust's presence in several Southeast Asian markets, we believe we can unlock synergies between the two companies, allowing the 48 Group to succeed in its expansion into Southeast Asia, while at the same time allowing us to leverage the Japanese Idol Group's popularity, allowing us to attract consumers in the region. Our operations at Keyholder include concerts, TV shows, the creation of new Idol Groups, SKE, financial services, and crowdfunding services. We believe we can unlock synergies between these different operational subsegments. 
Also, we have to think of ways to reward those who became shareholders in Keyholder following this announcement in the form of shareholder incentives. This concludes my overview of the entertainment business. Next, I would like to give an outline of our results for the second quarter for financial business in Japan. We expect to be able to grow our condominium guarantee balance until around March of next year. A number of real estate companies have recently been caught colluding with banks to pad client deposit balance data in order to make it easier for unqualified customers to obtain loans. We at JTrust Group don't put much weight in deposit balances because we guarantee condominium loans as a function of the value of the underlying property. In other words, scandals like the one I just mentioned have had absolutely no direct impact on our loan guarantee business. However, we expect the banking industry may be affected, and banks have started applying stricter credit checks for people seeking these types of loans. So, for example, we expect banks may start requesting potential customers to make a down payment for an amount representing 20% of the value of the underlying property. It becomes difficult for someone with an annual income of 10 million yen to borrow, say, 300 million yen in order to buy a rental property for investment purposes. So naturally, these types of investments are becoming harder and harder to carry out. I have received a proposal to guarantee more than 100 million yen in condominium loans. Of course, as a matter of corporate governance, I do not have the authority to approve it, but it is in the process of being reviewed. Sometimes it is difficult to accurately ascertain a customer's credit worthiness, so we are currently in the process of developing new guarantee products at Nihon Hosho. This process isn't new to us, given that we used to issue consumer loans. We correctly predicted that the market for consumer loans would eventually become dominated by banks, so we had an early start by selling these loans to banks and then transitioning to the guarantee business for consumer loans ourselves. Again, this time, we will try to find other businesses other than consumer loans. There is a six-month time lag between guarantee approval and the actual process of building these condominiums. As a result, and given our commitment to existing clients and banks, we can't stop providing financing for these projects. So for this reason, we expect the guarantee business for condominium loans to keep expanding until March of next year. We forecast a guarantee balance of 150 billion yen for condominium loans alone, allowing us to obtain sound revenue stream. Additionally, our servicer business has also recently entered a partnership with Sotheby's International Realty, a company operating primarily in the real estate market in Hawaii. For example, the Open House Group has recently expanded into the overseas real estate market. JTrust has similarly expanded its operations into the market for the guarantee of overseas real estate secure loans in places like Hawaii, Las Vegas, and Houston, as well as in other locations along the West Coast. In the servicer business, we continue expanding our loan balance. Also, we are in the middle of continually expanding business relations with railroad companies for guarantees on reverse mortgage loans. I don't think it is that far off, but once decisions have been made, it might appear on the news. As for our loan servicing business, buyouts are periodically progressing in a way that is favorable. In addition, bank finance is also moving along. Customer loans originated by banks have really taken off in recent years, so we expect an increase in personal bankruptcies and civil rehabilitation as these borrowers grow older. We believe this will result in an increase in NPLs and be an opportunity for business. Next, I would like to go over financial business in South Korea. The law keeps changing almost on a yearly basis in South Korea, resulting in a steady lowering of the interest rate ceiling. Our competitors in the industry try to make up for this by lending at rates very near the upper legal bound. I don't have anything against this if it translates into profit, but I think that, especially for consumer loans, this strategy has the drawback of drawing criticism from the government. Which is why we at JTrust took the approach of providing loans with more moderate rates, since we expect the limit to be lowered even further. We can make up for this by increasing volume, 
and by keeping loan delinquency rates low. We believe this is key to improving profitability. There has definitely been an increase in regulatory oversight on the part of the South Korean government, especially for savings banks, when it comes to the interest rate ceiling. On the other hand, while higher interest rate products have come under intense scrutiny over the past few years, there has been a regulatory loosening when it comes to mid-range interest loans, especially in the market for consumer loans which is why we think it's a good opportunity to capture more volume in the market for these types of products. However, we will not just expand mid-range interest loans, as Japanese banks in Japan did when they did not have strict regulations. So, while we have seen regulatory tightening in some areas, we are seeing signs of loosening for other loan categories. So I think the tide is starting to turn somewhat. We were able to meet our full-year earnings forecast for the financial business in South Korea during the first half of the year. Perhaps we were too conservative in our forecast. At the risk of angering our employees who work with the region, our Mongolia's business impact on the company is still very low. However, we have many years of experience with new auto loans, especially through our Toyota dealership loans. We are starting to experience more competition from banks in the region, so we would like to focus our efforts on used car loans. We currently charge between 30 and 40 percent annually on these loans. So far, our operations have been completely self-financed. When it comes to new auto loans, we are currently in talks with several banks in the region to see if we can provide guarantee on bank loans using our operational know-how in this area. Regarding our problematic Indonesian business, we sent management to Indonesia upon our acquisition of JTrust Bank Indonesia. Our efforts were unfortunately unsuccessful. We tried a second time by sending management with experience in running a bank to Indonesia, but we were again unable to turn things around, as loan defaults continue being a problem. So what I tell them is the following. You don't have what it takes to run a successful bank, so I urge you to stick to the basics and stop trying to do too much. Even if we succeed in attracting deposits, we do not have to expand loans. Instead, we should allocate the money to bonds so that we do not have to reduce total assets. They don't even have to post a profit, provided they can avoid losses. They went overboard and were too eager to increase the bank's loan balance, which ended up backfiring on us in the form of higher defaults, driving us into negative earnings territory. Of course, the Southeast Asian business consists of a banking component and a non-banking component. In non-banking, at first, GLFI was established and JTrust took a 20% position in the company. Then GLFI and JTrust aimed to expand its business through the joint finance. However, the plan came to a deadlock. Therefore, our company newly purchased the company, PT Olimpindo Multifinance, which is currently PT JTrust Olimpindo Multifinance. 60% of the shares are owned by JTrust, and the remaining 40% shares are held by the founder a local Indonesian who is knowledgeable about things including local circumstances. The founder thinks he should tie up with a bank to survive in the market, so we are also considering a change of course to generate revenue as a non-bank. We have to get back on our feet, so we don't want to be over-eager to do too much in the banking sector and should strive instead to continue expanding Olimpindo's loan balance in an attempt to increase profitability. Olimpindo deals in a multitude of products, not just used auto loans, but also home renovation loans. They also have a partnership with Kubota, Yanmar, and Tata, allowing them to sell loan products. We bought a failed bank, but we didn't expect to fail not only once, but twice in our restructuring efforts. If we had never purchased JTRUS Bank Indonesia, I suppose our earnings would be better. But rather, had we only purchased ANZ Royal Bank Cambodia instead, things would have gone smoother. We are currently in the process of switching over to our own system infrastructure at the bank, and we hope the transition to be complete by May or June. It's ANZ, 
so its quality of assets is superior. I think JTrust has the potential to easily deliver 10 billion yen in operating profit if we only have Japan, Korea, and Cambodia. However, can we really turn things around at JTrust Bank Indonesia? I personally, as the president and owner of JTrust, have some concern about whether we can really reconstruct and run a bank which once went bankrupt. Those responsible for running things are of course diligent professionals, but I asked them a very direct question. You said you can do it, but so far you have failed a number of times. So are you really up to the task? One possible solution is through a joint financing structure between our bank and the guarantee business within non-banking business. I am confident this arrangement would work. Mr. Chiba, another representative director of JTrust, will be moving to Indonesia in January of next year to oversee operations on a full-time basis and oversee structural reforms and governance and credit worthiness checks at the bank. On the other hand, I shall be returning to Japan to oversee a strategy towards regrouping and improving the company's health. My one idea is that we will ask some very organized banks from Japan, China, South Korea, or Taiwan, any nationality is okay, to run the bank. There is a legal limit on bank acquisitions in Indonesia, so a possible strategy would be to have them acquire 40% ownership and run the bank for us. We would be shareholders in these banks, but use a joint financing structure. Selling the management rights to the bank is something I think we should consider. I think receiving financing from financial institutions and have them manage the bank for us in an organizational efficient manner is perhaps a necessity. Some of it is contingent upon representative director Chiba's ability to implement structural reform at the bank. But I think having an institution with experience running a bank manage JTrust Bank Indonesia is a possibility worth exploring. Moving forward, we would like to explore this possibility. Regarding the company's efforts to ascend to the first section of the TSE, it has been a slow process. The reason for this has been reputational damage from rumors and concerns about previous business partners. We continue taking steps to address these issues. What was taking the longest was the removal of risk factors outside the scope of our business operations at the company. But now we need to make sure we can implement structural change to our business as well in a sustainable manner after these second quarter results. We are a little bit behind schedule, but I personally hope to see the listing process to be completed within the next one year period. In terms of mergers and acquisitions, we are considering acquisition in Cambodia for the time being, but also acquiring a non-bank license in the country is fine. We are considering just one or two other projects. We could go forward with these plans or maybe not. Given our negative experience in Indonesia, we will be more discerning and analyze what went wrong, as well as what we can and cannot accomplish. The financial business in Japan delivered robust results. This isn't directly related to JTrust, but I invested in a company called Samurai and J Partners. They are in the investment business and own a securities firm. Their team is composed of young people doing work in innovative areas like crowdfunding and cryptocurrency loans. I am thinking of incorporating some of these things into the financial business in Japan. They are a little bit inexperienced and as a result have reported losses. It is the kind of company that they only need one successful project to start turning a profit, but they are still green. Moving forward, I would like to continue picking their brains for new information and ideas in these areas and perhaps explore some partnership ideas. Finally, for Keyholder, the company hasn't been making much profit when it comes to detached homes. Given the impending VAT hike to 10% next year, I believe the real estate business at the company will be negatively affected. For this reason, we are considering holding back a little bit on buying new stock when it comes to detached homes, 
and adjust our existing stock prior to the planned tax hike. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening.